What is up everyone? It's Chris from Lime Punch Forge. Today we've got something amazing. If you like shiny gemstones, all made in the US, and by made in the US I mean grown in the US, from Montana, we've got a box of Montana Sapphire Gravel from Gem Mountain Mine in Montana. I'll throw their information down in the comments or down in the, uh, you know, the shibidibidi down there. And then I will also uh, put links and all that stuff on the screen when I do all my editing and all that fun stuff. So check them out if you love sapphires, can't get away from home. This guy, this box delivered right to your home, right to you, to mine in your own backyard, your own garage, and you end up with a beautiful array of miscellaneous gemstones and amazingness. So if you guys haven't already, check out LionPunchForge.com. Also, if you like merchandise like this guy and some shirts and some other fun stuff, check out LPFSwag.com. I got t-shirts, I got fun stuff. Show your love. And then coming up soon, there's gonna be a video talking about what Metalsmith Mafia is. And I got merchandise for that too. So please, if you haven't already, there's a subscribe down there. There's a little button, a little bell thingy, bub bub. Hit that so you know when I make new videos. And let's get on this, cause who doesn't love amazing stin? <sighs> let's just do it. All right, everyone, when you order a box, this is basically how it comes. This box is $60. It's about two gallons, two and a half gallons of sapphire rich gravel. And essentially what, uh, what we're gonna do is go through this. And the last one I went through ended up coming up with these beauties. Who doesn't love amazing sapphires, right? So, we're gonna open this box. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you're looking at here. All right, let's open this up and then we will show you kind of what we need in order to do all the sifting and stuff. Box of gravel, straight from the mine. They take shovels full, throw the shovels in the bucket and it arrives to you looking like this still got mud still got dirt looks like it was probably raining in Montana still got all sorts of fun stuff in here but just looking at the top layer you'll see some big big uh, bigger rocks some smaller rocks and uh, sometimes you'll find some organic material too like that because this came out of the ground they haven't done anything with it other than take a shovel full, throw it in there, and then now you get to dig through, you get to see all the fun stuff and all that. But there are some steps that we need to take in order to find the amazing things. And that starts with cleaning and classifying. Classifying is taking the large and removing the large from the smalls. The smalls are what your sapphire is going to be normally found in because they're little bitty pieces. You're, you're probably not going to find a sapphire that size. So, but that said, if I do, I want to make sure I save it. So there's a classifying system that I use to keep the gravel big chunks separate from the little chunks so that later on I can go through and I can look through to see if there's any cool hematite or jaspers or agates or anything like that because this lot of stuff will have a lot of those things they'll have some hematite they'll have some jasper agates uh lots of sapphires lots of lots of little sapphires but right now you can't see them because they're all covered in mud so let's talk about what we need all right i've done this a few times and this is by far the simplest method that i've found i have these three classifying pans i have What's going to be my bottom pan, 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 bottom pan. And it's got the smallest mesh. 
The next one is going to be kind of a medium mesh. And then the last one is going to be my coarsest mesh. And I'll stack those on top of each other. What I'm gonna do is these fit inside, or not inside, but into the lip of a five gallon bucket. I'm going to take these, place them on a five gallon bucket, and just put in a little bit of dirt from the box, run some water on top, sift it all down so that my bottom pan there will most likely, more likely than not, have my sapphire bearing gravel. So I want to separate those, but I don't want to discard these two layers of gravel for classifying because I want to go through those layer later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the leftovers from here, I'm going to dump those into the five gallon bucket that this is sitting on, and I'll save that for later. Then, after you get your first pail, you're going to need a variety of tweezers, maybe a loop, um, a flashlight helps sometimes, but if you're going to be doing tweezers, I do not recommend doing cross locks like this, because sometimes you'll get gravel in there and you won't be able to open or close those very well. I like these because I can apply pressure, I can relieve pressure and they don't get clogged up as easily. So the other thing that I do is I'll put a towel down because this is going to be washed gravel and I'll flip it over and we'll get to that in a minute but I'll flip it over and I want some place for the moisture to go into the towel and not running off the table and all that kind of fun stuff. So we'll do that We'll come back, let's do our first wash, and I'll show you how that goes. All right, one of the things that we're gonna have to do is, I've got a bucket down here that I'm gonna fill up with water, I'll pour all the gravel into it, and then I'll use that to kind of start pre-washing the gravel. And then once it's pre-washed, I'll dump it through my classifying screens, and then we'll take one over to the bench, dump it over after I show you how to do that, and then uh, start looking for sapphires. So. Stay tuned, stay with me, and let's have some fun. And we're gonna fill that up so that we have some stationary water for me to wash the pan in. And then once that's all filled up, um, we'll keep it filled up. I'll probably cycle the water a few times in order to uh, get some of that muddy dirt out. And that way I'm not taking too much of that over to when I start sorting through the gemstones. So I'm gonna let that fill up a little bit. I'm gonna take the shovel. I'm going to basically just start kind of washing it. I wanna separate the dirt from the rocks and separate the gemstones from the dirt. And that may take a couple of times in order to start filling up this with water so that it can stay full and then I'm going to start classifying material to the pans. So while that's going, I'm going to take my shovel, I'm going to get a little shovel full here, drain my water out, throw that in there. And then 
we're going to just shake it around. And here I already see one right there. So that guy's that guy's a little sapphire. We're going to go ahead and take all this stuff down. going to dump off some of this water so it's easy to move. That way I can just like that. Since seem to have a whole lot in there so I'm gonna take another scoop one more I always wash my shovel up I want to have one stuck on there Wash this real quick. Get everything tumble down. And then I'm going to take the top pan off. Save that over here. I'm going to look at this bottom pan, this next one, and see. Holy crap, holy. That is probably the biggest sapphire I have found in one of these yet. This guy right here, and I'll show him on camera. Let's take a look at that. That is probably one of the biggest sapphires I've found. And you guys got to see it here. So I'm going to put him over on the table so I don't lose him. And so far, so good. And then we're going to take this one off. And we're not getting rid of any of this gravel. We're going to save it, dump it into this bucket down here. And then go through it again later. Alright. So now here's where the secret comes in. It's all about how you move your pan. Sapphires are heavy, so they're gonna sink to the bottom. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is get all the dirt off of them and then start moving it so the heavy stuff can fall to the bottom. Swirl it around, left and right, fold and back, swirl it around. Lift it up, and this will hopefully bring those beautiful sapphires to the bottom of this pan, which means when we flip it over, it'll be on the top of the pan. So I'll do this a few more times. Now we're going to take this over to our table, put it on the towel, dump it over, and see what we can find. Join me there. Oh, I see one already. Okay, so here we have our pan, and I'm going to just zoom in and move this around a little bit for you guys to see 
kind of what you're looking at when you're looking at the gravel. And I'm looking in the screen trying to find one for you. And there's one right there. So let me see if I can point to it. Maybe. Let's see if I can see it in the screen. What you're looking is for a bright green or blue or yellow. Let's see. Oh, there's one right there. There's two of them right there. One. Two. One kind of green, one kind of blue. I'm going to stick those in my little pan here. And then I'm going to also put our huge one in there for us to look at. So I'm going to zoom out and we're going to dump this thing and see what kind of fun stuff we have in it. All right, here we go. I'm going to dump this and try not to hit my camera. And I'm going to come towards me. And it just moves everything to the bottom. Shake that out a little bit. And then we will get to this. All right. So what we're doing is hopefully now the sapphires are on the bottom of our arrangement here. So I should be able to just pick through and they should be in the center area because of how I was swirling it. So there's, there was one, one little guy. What you're looking for is color, clear color. And you'll have a bunch of these guys too, and I like them. Little tiny pinks. Find some color, there's another one right there. And before I start moving gravel around, I like to just look over the top to make sure there's nothing just right there for me to pick up, put away, Safe for, safe for looking. There's a little clear one. There's a little clear one. Not all of them are going to have great color, but what you're looking for is those special ones. The greens, the blues, all those amazing colors. Like this guy. That is probably a nice green, greenish blue. And it's still not as big as that one I found earlier. I'll show you guys that comparatively here in a minute. So some of them are flat, like the one I just fling, flung, fling, flung, dung. I'll find it here in a second. Like this one here. That one's flat. I make a good little cab or something. And what I'm doing is I'm just a little bowl full of what I'm keeping here. So I can keep all of it separated. Here's a little tiny pink one. Let's see if I can find some more green ones. Green is by far the most common. Pinks and blues are my favorites though. There's a little clear one. All right, now that I got most of the top kind of looked at, I'm gonna start looking through this a little bit deeper. Trying to look for colors and then I can always pour this back in that other bin to be washed and then re-sift it again. I will go through this stuff several times to find what I want to find. You're not going to get everything the first time. 
So that's why it's good to save this stuff, look at it later, let your eyes rest. That one's decent, but it's kind of milky. clear ones, once you get them all together, they start to look a little bit pink. I thought I saw some green. I did. There you go. There's another green one. It's a nice one. Clearish green, but it's got some nice uh, color flash to it. Little tiny bitty one. And I'll save this gravel and just go through it looking for the little guys later on. Right now I'm just trying to pick out the big ones. I get bored, feel like we're all counting at home. I can take out the gravel just start picking out little guys. And when I say little, I mean like the size of pave stones, tiny. dump this back into that wash bucket and get some more. So I'll be back in a second. All right, number two. All right, here we go. Let's just search the top here real fast. Need a bunch of these little tiny clear ones that I like. And they add up after a while. There's, looks like a blue. There's a little green. Maybe, focus. Kinda hard to focus on those guys. I'll show some close-ups here in a minute. Little tiny clear. There's a nice one. A little blue. I'm trying to darken you guys up a little bit. There you go. There's another one. Oop, I dropped it. It's around here somewhere. We'll find it. It landed on the towel. I could hear it. A lot of these little clear ones. Like I said, they add up after a while though. Let's find a big one. Oh, just as I say that. There is a decent sized yellow. Now just because they're decent size doesn't mean they're gonna cut well and doesn't mean they're worth a lot of money. That green one I found will probably cut really well and may actually be 
a pretty decent stone. Or clear. Clear yellow. Do another one. And again. All right. Oh, would you look at that? Let's wash this off. The size of that one. That's a nice green blue color, too. Variegated blue. We're going to get close ups of these when I. Uh, Get them all washed up and organized. A little blue. Here's a green. Another blue. Another green. Another green. Bring my light down here and see a little bit better. That's better. I'm gonna tip you guys down a little bit too. Or up. One of the two. Nope, down. You guys don't wanna see me, you wanna see sapphires. All right, so here is another decent. Zoom in a little bit here so you can see the gravel. tiny one. I'll pick those out at off camera probably. Let's see. There's a clear. Here is a blue. Now when I swirl my pan around in the water if I use centrifugal force to spin it around, I can get all the sapphires to be around the outside edge. So that's, I tried to do a better job of that this time and it looks like it paid off because they're all around the outside edge. No, not all of them, some of them. The big ones are. There's a little blue, a little green. There's another one. There's another little brother next to it. Now when I contacted Gem Mountain to order this gravel, they had absolutely no idea that I was creating a video. I just placed an online order, it got delivered, and then here I am digging through it, making a video. Now, I have contacted them and told them that I am making a video, but they had absolutely no idea prior to me ordering the gravel that I was going to. So, they had no chance to spike my mix just for a video. So, this was ordered online. They had no idea that I was making a video. This is very reminiscent and you'll have the exact same chances to find what I'm finding in your own gravel. They just take a scoopful, put it in a box, good to go. So whatever I'm finding, you have the same chances of finding. So the next question people have is $60 worth it? And every single time that I have ordered gravel from Gem Mountain or the Spokane Bar Mine, uh, it's, it's been worth it. If anything, for the entertainment value. But you do end up with, like you guys have seen, some nice looking sapphires. 
There's a little white one hiding back here. There you go. More clear ones. Some of these are milky colored with inclusions, but the my favorite are the little tiny round green ones. And you find those things all day long. There is either a garnet or a spinel. First, I think it's the first time I found one of those in there. Nice red color. Duh, I'll have to identify that later. Throw him in the bucket. You can find all different types of gems in this stuff. Another one. Let's get our light out. Just play with some light. See what we can see. Little clear ones. sorts of stuff lighting up. There you go. white one move this around so I can see a little better stupid mufflers Just looking for bits of color or glimpses of shiny stuff. Like I said, you watch this several times, doing the same thing over and over again. And sometimes you'll miss one and you'll get it the second time or third time. But this is hours of entertainment. Especially if you are boring like me. Oh, there's one. Almost missed it. <laughs> Another green one. Another green one. Don't know where that one went. White one. We'll find that green one that went goodbye. I'm gonna switch to these tweezers. All right, let's wash another.
Hey Lion Punchers, I hope you guys enjoyed looking for sapphires, I know I did. Gem Mountain in Montana or www.gemmountain, spelled out mountain, and then mt, like montana.com, is their website. You can order a bucket for yourself, you can dig through, rock count from home, have some fun, find some amazing sapphires. And before I go, I wanted to remind you guys, if you haven't already and you like this kind of stuff, hit the uh, subscribe button down somewhere and you know the thing over there and that bell notifications that way you can know whether or not uh i decide to make another video so we'll see how that happens but before i go uh, since i have done this sapphire thing before i wanted to share some of the ones that i have gotten before and so basically let me try and focus you guys here yeah this is what i've gotten from previous buckets and I think I did one or two before. So you can find some significant amount of stones. The pinks and the blues tend to be uh, more desirable and the sizes are decent for uh, some stone use. Some of the little guys, you know, those are fun to just put in a glass jar and display and talk about mining for sapphires in your garage. Um, but some of the other ones, I think this one came from the Spokane Bar Mine, is relatively good sized. Let's see if I can focus you guys. And the big, but the big problem with this one is, I take a light, shine it through, and see how much does it weigh. <coughs> Let's look for a weight for you real fast. This is an 11 karat sapphire. The big one I found yesterday, this guy, you used to see pictures of him, that's a, but a four karat sapphire. And when you facet one, you lose approximately 33% of the weight of the stone if there are no inclusions or things that you need to work around when you're faceting that. So I can easily take a, four carat stone and grind away all but maybe 1.3 carats so sometimes you have to ask yourself what do you want with it and i think with these guys what i'm going to do is put them in the collection put them in display think about what i want to do with them not make any decisions right now and then when one, I come up with an awesome idea, or two, I feel like I have enough skill to be able to cut that like it needs to be cut, then I'll go for it, or we'll see. So I appreciate you guys watching. Check out Gem Mountain, Montana. Look at their buckets. Usually you can get a bucket for about $60, and that includes shipping. So yeah, $60, dirt in your driveway sapphires in your hand talk to you guys soon and i appreciate you as always